Hello and welcome Autodesk people to today's Tech Talk video. My name is Jay Ayala. I'm a technical specialist for the AEC industry based out of Richland, Washington State. Today's Tech Talk video, not to be confused with a TED Talk or a TikTok video, <laughs> is on callouts and a hack that I have uh, recently found and rediscovered actually. Um, I've done this before, but uh, this this tech talk this tech talk video, <laughs> see even I'm having trouble with that is a is a, applicable to not just the MEP background, which is what I typically cater to, but also the structural engineering, uh, anybody using Revit for architecture. This is about callouts and anybody who uses callouts, which is everybody who uses uh, the Autodesk Revit program. So. What am I talking about specifically? I'm talking about making your documents very clear and legible when you're uh, producing them. So let's take a look at an example that I have here with Bluebeam. I'm using Bluebeam, I'm syncing my views, and I've got a call out here. I'm, I'm going to point it out. It's hard to read when uh, you're not masking it. And it's, it's, you know, especially when it's in congested areas, things are overlapping. But if you apply a masking uh, region to your callout, and uh, when you combine it with a little hack that I'm going to show you here, it really helps clarify what, what we're going to accomplish as far as getting documents that are clear and easy to read out the door. And this will help improve the quality of the product that uh, you ultimately make, which is the construction documents. Okay, so um, welcome to the video, and let's get into some of the details here. So how do we accomplish this? And it's a little bit of a process and we're gonna walk step by step through this. Okay, so to start off, we're going to look at um, our callouts and determine, number one here, determine the offending callout family name. So how do we do that? Let's switch over to Revit and take a look at, uh, very closely at how to do that. So here I've got my sheet A1-1 dims, which is the previous sheet that you just saw in Bluebeam with uh, a masking and a non-masking callout. I'm going to switch to um, the floor plan that's applied to that particular sheet. So I'll go ahead and open that up and you'll be able to see that call out right here, okay? So if we need, step one, we need to determine the name of the bubble, that call out head. So how do we do that? And it's pretty simple. You select the call out. Step one is to determine which family is being used for that call out head. So here, that whole call out that's being used we can simply click on the callout tag, okay? The tag, and then you can go and look at this particular uh, ellipses here in the type properties, okay? You click on the ellipses, you will now expose the graphics section here that tells you the callout head is using a family name called callout head, coincidentally, right? So we're going to go and edit that particular family called callout head, <laughs> okay? So how do we do that? Simple, we open the family name. Step number two is we open that family name. So how do we do that? And that's just, you'll just use the regular open command. And in the left navigation bar over here, you're gonna see that we have the Imperial Libraries. That callout is part of the annotation folder here. If I double click on it, you'll see it right here under callout head, okay? That's the one we're looking for. So let's go ahead and open this. Okay, so here's the call out. Number three, we're gonna start by adding the mask region. Mask region is pretty simple. From the create tab, you're gonna see the detail panel and here's the mask region tool, okay? So I'll go ahead and start this and I'm going to use the circle option and I'll just go ahead and start at the center of the, the current circles that we've got here and uh, I'll just kind of make sure that it is exactly the same size as that call out, okay? And then um, I'll just go ahead and finish this. Green check mark here, finish. And so we've got that, call, that, that mask region added, okay? Next, number four, we're gonna delete the line that divides the upper half from the lower half, okay? So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about this line right here. Yes, delete it, okay? <laughs> this, is, this is part of the hack. You'll see, you'll see here in just a moment. Now that it's deleted, we're gonna go into the part of the hack that works to make this uh, fully functional. And I picked up this tip from I, another user, I, I can't remember where I found this. 
I think it was on a forum in Augie, it might have been Autodesk forums, but this is something I found years ago and um, I've revisited it and I've added my own twist to it. You'll see what I'm talking about here. So number five talks about replace that line with text underscores. Yes, text underscores. And there's a specific reason we're doing that. So let's go ahead and do what I'm talking about. Um, the way I like to do it is I like to use just the standard text command and I like to do middle center alignments here as you can see and in the type I'm going to make a new type instead of text note one we're gonna make a new type and I'll duplicate text note one and I'll call this text note three two fifty sixth of an inch okay it's the smallest text size we can get all right, so that's the name of the type. Uh, two settings that I want to change here is the background. I want to make sure that that goes from opaque to transparent. Yes, transparent, okay? Next, we want to change the text size from one quarter of an inch to three, as you guessed it, 256th of an inch. All right, so now that I've got that, I can go ahead and, and make sure that I get my text started here and obviously you can use the underscore character here okay um, and I'll go ahead and kinda make that larger than it needs to be here and now if I select it I can just kinda move it into place where I see that it's going, going to fit now what I'm looking for here as I zoom in closer is where does the straight line cross the circle where it flattens out you can see kinda the raster image that's making here the graphics is making that circle into a raster image and I can kind of find that center point and I now I can back out and I'll use the arrow keys right and left to nudge this into place so that it is centered as closely as I can get it okay if I have too many of these I can simply um, select in the middle of this and delete a couple the idea is I want to go all the way across across the the, the graphics of the circle but I don't want to exceed that uh, that space okay so that's the underscore but here's a better character and I'll explain why we're going to use Microsoft's character map okay so I'll just type character map and I'm going to advise you that rather than using underscores you can you can use it it just comes in really thin and there's little tiny gaps that appear between each underscore and one of the characters that I found in the character map that works really well to help eliminate that is this guy right here I think I went too far yeah I did it's this guy right here it's called the U plus zero two CD modifier letter lower macron okay it's this guy right here so what you do is you simply double click on it and now you want to copy that that character okay copy that character and you want to place that instead of the underscores you want to place that right here okay and just do a whole bunch of them okay Make sure that you span that distance all the way across without going beyond it, okay? And you might even want to select the entire run and make them bold, okay? I know it doesn't seem like much, but what this little bold trick does with this specific character, this low, this uh, modified low Macron character, um, it eliminates the gaps between each underscore or each character uh, really cleanly all right so here we've got that located right where it needs to be I know that graphically you can clearly see these underscores but when you print um, the result is is just a straight line here okay so let's load this into the project and over override the existing version and its parameters and that's the hack that I typically use to make sure that I get clear legible legible uh, callouts with that line that that works uh, well an additional thing that works really well with this is we can use this rotate with component if you choose to most people won't but if you choose to because of the way that this is this works that line that we've created that pseudo line that we've created with the characters actually tilts itself along with everything and the masking continues to be obeyed it's a little unorthodox with a character map and that specific character um, called the the low macron but um, give it a shot see what you think and the results speak for themselves again I'll go revisit that Bluebeam 
uh, that blue beam here, right? So as you get in closer and closer, you can see, in fact, that that's very legible. It hides the stuff underneath, and uh, it's very clear. So guys, that does it for me and this tech talk on the clarity of making your documents uh, very easy to read with callouts in particular, and how to mask that so the things beneath it um, are very easily uh, hidden and make your documents very clear to read. All right, we'll see you guys on the next talk, tech talk, <laughs> and uh, enjoy. Thanks a lot.